Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa if you're new here. For today's video, we are going to be going through my process on how I propagate a wet stick. I feel like wet sticks are really easy to propagate in my opinion and experience. It's one of those things where I just throw them in a container and the rest is history. That's literally straight to the point. I throw them in a container with moss, seal it, forget about it, and boom. Before you know it, you'll have growth <laughs> like this pasta tray here of sphagnum moss and new leaves. Can you guys see all that? So this here is what I made when I did my propagation video for that hanging propagation set. I will link it up here for you if you have not seen that. I cut and propagated so many empty nodes and I didn't show it in the video, but I actually did save them all and I threw them all in this tray here. And yeah, I literally just sit it down and I forget about it and couple months later, you'll have lots of new growth. And they do, a lot of wet sticks will root off the actual new growth itself. Don't drink the sphagnum moss water, child. A lot of the times that wet stick will push a new growth point first, and then once it sprouts, new roots will grow off of that growth point. And then once that happens and you have enough roots, then you can pot it up. But I would wait until you have like a decent size leaf before you pot into soil. And so for today's video, I just kind of wanted to show you this as an example of, this is usually what I do. Now, any container will work. It, I recommend it being clear and you can cover with saran wrap or if you have like a plastic container with a lid. I throw a lot of these actually in my prop box. I have a plastic prop box bin and for that you can seal it. You don't have to open it up and aerate it. I rarely do that with that prop box and everything. It just maintains itself. I feel like the smaller vessel you have, the less room that air is gonna be, I don't know, I just feel like the smaller containers don't work that well. You have to let some sort of airflow in. But I really don't have too many containers to use for this video. And so these are some seedling trays that I got off Amazon. This is just a plastic seedling tray. The insert I'm not using, but I am gonna use the top. It's a plastic top and it does come with these little lid things that you can open and close for airflow. I'm gonna use these. I'm gonna fill this with sphagnum moss and we are going to pot up some wet sticks and we are gonna take some fresh wet sticks to do in a different container so that you have like a variation of how I go about this. I have a container of some moistened moss. I'm gonna have to add more moss, so that's what this is. I have some alcohol in my shears. You wanna make sure you clean your shears with alcohol when you're cutting between plants, especially because you don't want to spread anything when you're cutting into the actual plant tissue. You just never know. I'd rather be on the safe side, especially if you're dealing with an expensive plant or cutting. Some of you who watched my import video, I will um, link that up here for you as well. But during that import process, I have a few videos I did on that process and rehabbing those plants. But one of the plants that did not do well was the Milano Chrysum. And I noticed rot on the base of that plant. So I ended up chopping it up and I had a total of six wet sticks from that. And so I told myself I was going to do this for a propagation video. I just hadn't done it yet so that I honestly was kind of neglecting these guys in a way. I should have taken care of this sooner. It's been weeks I, and I had them sitting in here. So that's partly my fault, but I'm gonna do what I can with these wet sticks and just kind of show you what I would do in this case. So I believe I have five in here. One was completely rotted and a couple of these do have some rotted ends that I might chop up because I feel like it could potentially spread. And I do have some new growth sprouting on a couple of these, but only one has rooted a little bit. So yeah, we are going to take care of these wet sticks and I will pan you down a little bit closer so you can see kind of what I'm doing. So we're gonna do, so I have five Milano wet sticks left we're gonna do in one container. I have to look around my plant room to see what we can do in the other one. Now, I will say when you're propagating a wet stick or a node, if it has no leaf, depending on the plant, cause I propagate a lot and I have propagated and have grown so many of my plants and I have a lot of plants in my collection. And I will say based off of my experience and based off the plants that I have propagated, 
depending on the specific plant, some take a lot longer to grow and root. So it really depends on the plant that you're trying to propagate, like that wet stick. And no matter what condition you give it, I have had some in like 100% humidity, the best light, and it still took them three to four to five months to actually push new growth and root. That's how long it took for some of my wet sticks to grow. And each node is gonna be different because I have taken cuttings off of the same like vine and cut them up and some nodes rooted and grew faster than others. So it really is, I think, just individualized. Depending on your cutting itself, it may or may not take longer than others. It really is just dependent on the individual one. And since I am dealing with a little bit of rot with these, I am gonna be soaking them in some water and hydrogen peroxide to kill off anything, any bacteria that's causing the rot on these wet sticks. While they're soaking in the water and hydrogen peroxide mixture, I will take some other wet sticks around my room. We'll cut them together and do those first. And then when we're ready to pot up the Milano wet sticks, we'll pot them up. All right, my head might be cut off a little bit for this. So just bear with me. I do have a little bit of rot on some of these. This node here, this was the base and this base is rotting all the way. And I don't want that rot to spread to any more of this wet stick. So I'm gonna be cutting above. So for these wet sticks, I am going to clean my shears with alcohol. Just to make sure there's nothing on them to start with. And like I said, with this one here that had the rotted base, we are just going to cut and get rid of that node. This top end is fine, I'm not gonna cut that anymore. And this bottom end, I'm just gonna let callus in dry. So that is one wet stick. And I will show you these up close too, like when we're done. And you wanna clean your shears again after each cut, especially when you're dealing with rot because you don't want anything to spread. So this is going in the trash, that is no good. And let's take a look at some others here. This wet stick here has a new growth forming and a tiny bit of aerial roots and it has a tiny bit of rot on the end which may not spread it may or may not spread it's hard to say i'm going to go ahead and just cut this little bit off just in case and you always want to cut more off than what you actually think and we'll cut a little bit more of that other end sometimes the ends just brown and it doesn't mean that it's rotted you know sometimes it is rot So we'll just get rid of those rotted ends. So we're left with a little wet stick and then we're gonna have to let those dry. This wet stick, it looks very dehydrated, which I probably didn't have in the moss that well. And this end is yellow. I'm gonna get rid of this end and I might cut a little bit more on this end too. Yeah, if it feels squishy, you're dealing with rot and I'm gonna cut a piece of that too but you always want to cut more than what you need off and when you're cutting a wet stick you always want to leave more room in case rot does happen then you can cut it away because the last thing you want is the rot to continue to spread so if you don't cut enough off it's going to continue to spread and sometimes you can tell by looking so when you cut if it's a clean white mark like that that means you got it all but if you see a little bit of discoloration still when you cut then that potentially means that you didn't cut enough of the raw off and you'll have to cut more and i'm going to do the same thing with this one cut the two ends until you don't have any any rot on there so like this is just brown because it's crispy i'm not going to cut this but this end looks like it's probably just brown, it's not rotted. I don't think I would have to cut this, but I'm gonna go ahead and just cut some of that away just in case. So these are five Milano wet sticks. And with the wet stick, you see that bump, that's where the new growth is, that's the node. And so a lot of the times they'll push new growth and then they'll root off the node. This one has a little bit of root that started to root off of this node and sometimes they do that. But a lot of the times, like this has these old aerial roots, so this one is gonna push that new growth first before it decides to root. So when I put these down in moss, you're just gonna sit them on top. You're not gonna bury these wet sticks and you wanna let these ends callous and dry. But before I let these ends callous and dry, I am gonna be soaking these 
in some hydrogen peroxide mixture because I want to kill any rot that has started. And I actually need to, you don't want to use straight hydrogen peroxide, you want to mix it three parts water to one part hydrogen peroxide. So I'm going to fill this up with some water and dump some hydrogen peroxide in here. So I'll be right back. So here is our water and you really should measure, just don't do as I do. <laughs> so we are gonna pull up those in there and we are gonna let those soak for like, I would let them soak for about 30 minutes and just let them kill anything. And then we're gonna rinse them, let them dry and callous probably for like another 30 minutes and then we'll pop them up. So in the meantime, while those are soaking, we are gonna go ahead and propagate some clean wet sticks so you guys can see what that process is like from start to finish without like dealing with rotted nodes. So let's take you around the room and figure out what we can propagate. Let's do, this Scandopsis is growing a runner, so why don't we cut this one off? So right here where you have a leaf, you wanna leave the leaf and then just cut on the stem under the leaf right here. So we're gonna cut this whole thing off, just like that. And then we will be cutting this up to propagate. Let's just go ahead and do some of these. I feel like these would be a good one to do. We'll just do one vine. Let's just cut right here. Yeah, I think that's all I'm gonna do. So we'll do a scandapsis and some Cebu Blue. And then we'll chop all these up and put them into a container with moss. The hydrogen peroxide, you can see it bubbling when it kills the rod. You can kind of see it working. So you wanna let it soak for a little while so it can kill off anything. And I will just show you, so this is one of my prop boxes that maintains itself and I really need to, I'm gonna go through here for one video and get these guys out of here. But do you see all these? These were all from wet sticks that I've done. So that I threw in here, like that's a wet stick that I threw in here that's rooted into the moss. And this is new growth that has come. All these literally were wet sticks. I just keep throwing them in here and they'll eventually root and grow and sprout new leaves. So anytime I have extra wet, wet sticks on my plants, I literally just throw them in here and they'll, and they'll grow. I wish you guys could see these cats down here. They're being so cute. So let's see, hopefully you can see okay. I'm just like weird about sanitizing often. Okay, so this is our Scandapsis and so these little sheaths that are on covering the node here, you don't need those. So you can just peel these right off and get rid of them. So all these little sheaths that are covering each node, cause that new growth is buried under the sheath. So for example, so here's the aerial root right here on the back, the node here, you can see the new growth where it will emerge. Each node will grow. So you have, you can have like one with a leaf and then you can have one that's just the wet stick. So we're just gonna do the wet stick. So you wanna have as much room. You don't wanna make it too short. So like I'm gonna cut in between the two nodes here. And so you don't need, this is like dead space where this node is on each side, but you don't wanna cut it too short because in case these decide to rot, you can cut away. Like say you rot up to here, then you can cut you know, a pretty good amount of that off to get rid of that rot. So that's why you don't want the wet sticks to be too short because you won't be able to cut that rot away. If it reaches the node, this wet stick is done. So that's why I recommend leaving them longer than what you need. And so what I wanna do is cut between each of these nodes. So there's another wet stick. Since this one has a leaf, what I'm gonna do is just propagate this one in water probably because I don't want this one to be confused with you know, the, the regular wet sticks. Cuttings that have a leaf, in my experience, root and grow faster than if they don't have a leaf. That's just what I've noticed with my plants when I propagate. So I'm cutting between each of, each of these nodes. And so this is my top cut here. So it has a new leaf unfurling. Technically there's a node here, but it hasn't, it's not gonna grow. So if I cut here, this, this is probably gonna end up dying because this node really hasn't developed. 
And I, I mean, this one I could save, but I'm just gonna be sticking this one in water. This is technically my top cut and the new leaf will emerge from this other leaf. So I'm gonna stick it in water with these and do like a water prop with these two. And then so out of that, I have four Skindapsis wet sticks here. And I always recommend labeling your prop containers um, so you know what they are. I usually don't label and then I forget what they are. So next is the Cebu Blue. So we are going to pull off all those sheaths. We're gonna have a lot of Cebu wet sticks. All right, and again, you can see each individual node. We're gonna cut in between them all. And this top one here, oh, we are just going to root that in water. And so we'll have one, yeah, we'll have a lot. Sorry if you guys hear mowers. I have waited like an hour to film today and they're just being so loud. All right, so I have seven Cebu Blue wet sticks and then four skindapsis. So when you put these in your prop containers, you will most likely forget what they are unless you label them. So we will, we will add a label to them so we don't forget what they are. And I'm not gonna stick these in moss right away because I want these ends to dry. I'd give it like 30 minutes. The smaller the vine here, they don't take that long to dry. But if they're a pretty thick vine, like these are a little bit thicker, but if you're doing something like an elbow node or a pink princess node, anything that has a thick vine, you want that end to callus and dry maybe for at least an hour because you don't want wet going into moss. You don't want that, that end being wet because it just like induces like some kind of bacteria to enter the plant tissue and that's what you don't want. So I'm gonna leave these here and get my moss ready and we are going to pop these up. So I have one seedling tray that I'm going to use and I am just going to go ahead and put some moss in here. Now the moss you want to be wet, you want it to be damp, but you don't want it to be sopping wet. So when I wring it, pretty much like give it a good fist squeeze. It, a little bit can drip, that's fine, but you don't want it to be like any wetter than that. And then you're gonna loosely fluff it. You don't want it packed super tight. You want it to be nice and fluffy and damp. You see how nice and fluffy that is? But you wanna make sure you're putting enough moss in. And some people can mix, I'm using moss. You can actually root wet sticks in many different substrates, but I prefer moss with, with mine. I just feel like, I just love sphagnum moss. I feel like I want a little bit more moss. And I don't use any kind of rooting hormone. I don't use anything in my moss when I propagate these, these wet sticks because I feel like they don't really need nutrients. You know, there's no roots. They just need that environment where it's moist and humid so that they can grow. That looks amazing. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the other one that we're gonna do the Milano wet sticks in once they're done soaking. So I'll go ahead and do that off camera and then by the time that's done, I'll come back in like 10, 15 minutes. These first ones should be calloused and then I'm gonna take these Milano wet sticks out of this peroxide mixture. I'm just gonna rinse them in tap water and then let them start drying for at least 30 minutes and then we'll do those in the other container. But I'll come back on um, once I give these a little bit of time to dry here. All right, I am coming back on. I think everything has had time to dry. It's been like 30 minutes, I think. These Milano wet sticks, I ended up rinsing and I have them drying on this paper towel. I feel like they're dry enough and I'm gonna go ahead and pop them into one of these containers. And we have all of our other wet sticks here too that we'll do in the other one, but we'll do the Milano first. So that again, this is just my moistened sphagnum moss. Kind of shimmy it down in there. You don't wanna like bury, bury the node. You know, you don't want it completely covered. You wanna have some sort of, you wanna you want try and maintain the ends out of the moss a little bit and we'll get them all kind of situated in there. So it's just kind of sitting on top. And again, you want the growth point up 
in there. And then they'll grow new roots like down and out into the moss. So you don't have to worry about burying them because again, you don't want the ends to rot. So here's another one. And then, so the growth point is up on this one. Do you see that growth point there? So we're gonna do this one down just like that. We're basically just sitting them on top the moss and just find your growth point and just do them all like that. Growth point. I'm gonna fix these again here. And this is the one that had that rotted end that we cut. Yeah, there's the growth point. Okay, so we're gonna do this one down over here. Sometimes I kind of take this moss and just like fluff it around the nodes a little bit. Cause you, want, you don't want them to like sit on top where they're just like floating. You want there to be some kind of moisture around the nodes to encourage them to root but you don't wanna like bury them. So I kind of fluff the moss around them. You can still see them. They're not like completely buried. So I have five in a row and I made my markers. This is the Milano on today, October 5th. So I'm gonna stick them this like down in the corner. And then this is my lid that I'm using. It has a lid that I can do for airflow. I'm gonna keep it like a little open, not a lot open. And I'm just gonna keep an eye on how they do. And these ones here don't shut very tight at all. It's not like super airtight. And then you just wanna make sure to sit this in some bright light, preferably by a window if you have like a bright window, like a foot back so some sun can hit this container, that would be ideal. And so with the other one, we're gonna do the same thing. So we have our Skindapsis Jade Satin, we're gonna do on one side. And then we have our Cebu Blue, we're gonna do on that side. So for these, you want the ends, the aerial roots to be down into the moss, like facing down that way. So I'm literally just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna set them all down where the, the node, like that little aerial root is facing down. So they're this lightly like in there. And then the Cebu we're gonna do on this side. Let me take a little bit of this moss off so I can fluff some on top. These all down in a row. And if the air root doesn't, like the aerial root doesn't get down into the moss, it's okay. You wanna do your best to cover them or get them down in there. And then I'm just gonna loosely cover with some moss just so that they have a little bit of moisture. They're not like completely buried. Okay, and that is that one. All done. Same thing, we're gonna leave this slightly open just to let a little air flow in. So I'm gonna find a spot for these. I'm probably gonna make a spot by my window here, just clear off a space so that they can get some sunlight. I feel like that's gonna give these guys the best opportunity to root. And then I, from this point on in the video, you guys will get some updates, whether it be weekly updates every two weeks until we actually have some new growth. And I'm kind of excited to take you along on this propagation of a wet stick journey with me. So I hope you enjoyed this part of the video. So yeah, I'm excited to see how these do for me. So stay tuned and I will be back with a, another update shortly. Okay, I actually just decided to stick them in my greenhouse. I think just the overall warmth and temperature in here is going to get them to grow a bit better than trying to make a spot for them by my window. I just feel like it would be probably ideal to keep them in here. If you don't have a greenhouse, definitely use a window or you can use a heating mat. That would definitely help them root and grow faster. So yeah, we'll keep them in here and keep an eye on them. Hello, it is Tuesday, October 10th. Is it the 10th? I don't remember now, but I was just checking on my cabinet and I figured I would do a little propagation update because I need to give them a little bit of water. I feel like the moss is drying out just slightly and I'd rather it be a little bit more moist. So I'm gonna show you the wet sticks and we'll give them a little bit of water and I'll probably update you in another week. Here are the two propagation vessels. 
So this was our Cebu Blue in Skin Dapsis Jade Satin and then our Milano Tear. So the moss is still a little bit damp. It's drying out a little bit on top. So I'm going to just take my water bottle and just slightly give them some water. I want the moss to be a little bit more hydrated than what it is. I think this will be good until until next time. Things dry out like pretty fast. I feel like sphagnum moss dries out pretty fast in my cabinet, but I just wanna make sure the wet sticks are like pretty moist, like the moss around the nodes stay pretty moist. So once that top layer starts to dry, I'm going to moisten it. So I might have to moisten it again, maybe by like Sunday. So if I do moisten it by Sunday, I'll let you guys know and I'll come back on here. But the main thing is I just wanna keep the moss on top kind of moist. So that's good for now. So yeah, we'll do another update when I go to water them again. Hey guys, it is October 18th. I'm not sure what happened to the audio on these clips, so I'm doing a quick voiceover, but I just wanted to show you the new growth on the Milano wet sticks here. The one on the end didn't really do too much yet, but everything else seemed to have a new growth point popping out. And this was after about a week since the last update. And here I'm just rehydrating the moss pretty well. This one was starting to dry out and then I just kind of fluffed it up around the nodes just to make sure everything was kind of staying hydrated. And then I covered this one back up and left the holes up top vented open still. And the next one, you guys, these ones for some reason completely dried out. I don't know why this one dried so much faster, but this is a big no-no just because they're not gonna grow if the moss is dry and anything that has like started to form roots is gonna dry up. So don't let your moss get to this point. I wish I had checked this sooner, honestly. But here I was just checking to see if there was any new growth. I noticed a little bit on the Cebu Blue here on the left and the Scadapsis didn't do anything yet. But yeah, this one, I really took my time and hydrated the moss. I just wanted to make sure like everything was fully saturated again. And then I just kind of fluffed up like I did the other one and covered this one. This one, I left the holes closed just because it dried out so fast. Hey guys, I just wanted to update you on these props. Today is November 4th, it's a Friday. I'm not sure when I last updated this video. I did give them water one more time since that video when I last like watered the plants in here. So it wasn't too long ago. I just took my watering can, my bottle and just watered the moss just to saturate it because it was getting a little bit dry. But I do have some new growth that I want to show you and like update this part of the video. And I'm going to show you the props and what they look like. They are making somewhat of a good progress and the moss still seems damp. I'm not going to water them anymore yet. I think I might wait till the next time I water my cabinet. So probably maybe in a couple more days, I'll give them a little bit more water. But I just want to show you the leaves. Some of them have popped some new growth and I just want to show you what they look like. The I think the biggest thing is just like the humidity, keeping that up and then keeping them warm are like the two biggest things to get your wet sticks to grow really well. So let me show you what they look like. All right, so here are our props and I will start with the Milano's. So it's been about a month. So I potted these up on the 5th and today's the 4th of November. And you see a couple of the wet sticks have popped out some leaves. They're so cute and little. And each of the nodes, you can kind of see there's a new growth point there on that one. That one has a growth point. Even that one there has a tiny bit of a growth point. So there's only five left in here. So two of pop leaves and the other three are working on new growth. And I feel like they are starting to root a little bit in here because I don't want to disturb them. But the moss still feels pretty damp, so I'm not going to give them any more water. And our props over here, the Cebu Blue and the Syndapsis. So the Cebu Blue, you can tell there's one little leaf that popped out on one of those nodes. And you can see there's another one there on one of the other ones. And it looks like the syndapsis hasn't really done too much yet. But again, this moss feels pretty damp, so I'm not gonna mess with them too much. But really, it's just a waiting game. You're just honestly waiting until they do something. I think that's the biggest thing with wet sticks is just waiting and being patient for growth. So they're doing well. And I have kept these lids somewhat closed on top. I have them open slightly just to vent a little bit, like that one's open a little bit 
because I don't want them to like go moldy or anything, but I want as much humidity in here as possible. So yeah, I just wanted to show you what they were looking like. And I will update you again when I go to water these. And then once they have like a pretty good leaf grown, I will transfer them into smaller containers. Yeah, we'll, we'll update you when we get some new growth on these. And I'm excited to finally have some like baby leaves growing. It is me again for another update. I honestly have no idea when I updated this video last, no idea. So these are my current props. I wanna show you them. Look at how cute they all are. So we have one leaf, one leaf, one leaf, one leaf, and then it's a little baby one down there. Do you see it? So they're all rooting and doing really well. I feel like I wanna get them into their own separate containers, but I think I'm gonna let them root in here a little bit longer, especially since that one just has like a little baby leaf. I don't wanna move these out of here just yet. I did give them some water the other day when I was watering my cabinet. I just, again, I just took my water bottle and just like squirted like that and just moistened it. Again, it's not like soaked, it's just kind of wet. And they've been in my cabinet the whole time. I haven't done anything with them. So those were the Milano Chrysums. And the other ones here, we have the Cebu Blue on this side, and these were the Skindapsis. So clearly the Skindapsis is, they're definitely slow growers, but they have not sprouted any leaves yet. So they're basically still just wet sticks. It goes to show you how fast some plants root over others. And the Cebu Blue, you can see tiny little leaves forming on those. So those are rooting and doing very well. And a couple of them have like little, tiny little growths right there about to start. So they, these are doing much better. Scandapsis, hardly anything. Once these guys, some of them, this one's actually sprouting a new leaf there. I don't know if it's gonna show you. So once they form, enough roots and they start to grow like a second leaf, I would I would probably keep these in moss for a while and then once they get a little bit bigger, then transfer them to soil. And these would even do well like in fluval. You could easily transfer these to fluval and grow them in a fluval for a while. But I'm gonna leave these in here a little bit longer and then depending on how I feel in that moment, I'll either use fluval and transfer them or pot them up or just leave them in here for a while. So I don't think I, I want this video to go too much longer because this has probably been since October 8th. So this video has been a month and a half in progress so far, but I think I'll wait a little bit longer. We'll see and then I will probably transfer these into their own separate container. But for now, they're making great progress. I'm really happy with them. So the moss is wet on both of these. I'm gonna put them back in my cabinet. And when I decide to do something with these, I will pop back on and update you and probably end the video at that point. Hey guys, I am popping on to, I think I wanna go ahead and end this propagation video. I think this has been going on for a little while yet. I was gonna wait and like pot these up, but I feel like I still want them to root in here for a while longer yet. So I think maybe I'll just do a part two of this video once these grow more and have some time and then I will pot them up on a different day. But I don't think they're quite ready and I would rather just go ahead and end this video because technically we grew the wet sticks and so this is what the Milano Chrysons look like. And the other ones still have a way to go. <laughs> Actually, so it's kind of funny. The Cebu Blue here, it, you see all the little leaves and the Scandopsis, nothing. So those guys take a really long time to grow. But I'll give you a closer look at them here. So today is Tuesday, December 6th. I think I updated not that long ago. I think it's been at least a week ago. And these guys have put out so many new little leaves. So these are the Milano Chrysums. Look at those, aren't they cute? Ah, they're just adorable. And I wanted to show you the Milano that I have on the thickly pole as well, cause it put out a new leaf. Do you see that? Look how gorgeous. So that was the import leaf, that was the first new leaf, and then that's the new one it just put out. It's doing so well, I'm so excited to see it growing and I can't wait to let this plant climb more. I think what I might do, so these do feel extremely rooted in here. 
you can kind of see those roots down in there. So I don't really want to disturb them yet. I have these two that have two leaves each and these ones literally are the orangey burnt collar so they're still unfurling. And this one here on the end is about to put out another one. And this one here has one that it's working on. And this one in the middle isn't really growing. There's just a tiny, a tiny little baby leaf. But they all five are very rooted and growing in here. I think in my next video, I might end up transitioning these to substrate like a soil mix and pot them up. But I still want to let them root a little bit more. I just, I would rather the leaves get a little bit bigger, the plant to grow more, to get a little bit more rooted, to have it survive being potted into soil. So... Yes, I'm gonna leave these in my cabinet longer. And again, the Cebu, Cebu Blue there on the right side, you can see all those little leaves. And then the Scandapsis did nothing yet. So yeah, and these guys feel, they feel rooted, but they're not like super rooted in here. So I would leave these in here for a while longer until they get more rooted and they grow a bit more. And then just like with any propagation and moss, just peel off the moss as much as you can without like damaging the roots. And I will do this in a video when it's time for these so that you can see that process. So I will make this a part two. I just wanted to give you one last final update on them. And I think I may end up, since this is just one vine, I may end up putting the two that have the two leaves. I might repot this plant and add them on the edge of this so that I'll have three vines growing up this pole. I think I might do that and then I might just pot the other two up separately, I think is my plan with these. But I have five total, so I do know that I wanna add a couple more to this pole. So I hope you enjoy this propagation video. The biggest thing to take away is, is just time. When you're propagating a wet stick, you just need a ton of time. It, it could take months and months before you get a tiny plant growing and you can transfer it. You definitely don't want to do it too soon. There's nothing wrong with letting them root in here and getting established in the moss first. So if they're, they're in like a really high human environment, right? So you want to kind of keep them in that environment once you transfer them to soil. And if you want to acclimate them out, just kind of do it slowly. Time and patience is your key to growing a wet stick and getting them in that proper environment where the humidity is high and the temperature is high just to help um, just to help them grow. So that's really the only thing I've done. It's just been a waiting game and keeping them in my cabinet. It's usually in the 70s for temperature and humidity. Sometimes it's over 80 for both of those. And I just made sure that the moss didn't completely go dry. And that is it. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching this propagation journey with me. And I can't wait to do a part two when these are ready to pot up.